Well, what do you guys say about the test exam three? It might just be a quest, 60 or 70 points, 50 or 60 or 70 points instead of 80 or 90. Exam three or quest one. Possible, but I might go out of the way and, and make it a full exam. If you do it next Friday, for example, it would cover three one, three two. A little bit of five one. If we do it the last week, there'd be more on it. And I'd wait it heavier. Which do you prefer? Well, let's take it next week and then we'll take it. <laughs> okay. I, I think I'm taking it next week. If we need to. You want to do it next Friday? Sure. Okay. Ty? Yes, next Friday. No, Wait, what was the question? <laughs> Friday or the week after? Last week. Oh, I say last week. There's going to be more on it, you know. Catherine, take your pick. Uh, with that one, I'm fine with anything. Anything? No. Lydia? Friday is okay. Friday is okay. Yeah. Morgan? Yeah, I think Friday. Friday. I'll let you know Monday, but we'll point to this. We'll point to this. That way you can get it over with. Okay, we'll point to this for now. Then it's more likely to be a quest. 60, 70 points, okay? Not 80 or 90. Okay. At the end of the hour, I'm going to write up my our tell all again. Our tell all. How come Caitlin's not watching? You're Kelsey, right? Yes, I am. <laughs> You're in Dallas? Yes, I had an interview yesterday. Don't breathe while you're in Dallas, okay? <laughs> I will try not to. Okay. I'm going to do our tell-all at the end of the hour, which I already did. I'll try to emphasize. But in the meantime, in the meantime, um, Now, 4-4 four, four is hard in case you're trying the problems and you're saying, gee, this isn't as easy as he made it look. Okay, 4-4 four, four is hard. At least on the first try, it's hard, okay? 4-4. Um, four, four. Today, we're going to do two examples. Okay. Um,
freedom and compulsion, freedom and forcing. I'm stealing my easiest example from myself. How can I do that? I mean, this is a test question. D minus three times D plus one. That's D squared minus two D minus one. Can you read this, Kelsey? Yes, I can. Thank you. Excuse me? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Okay. The point is, we'll call it the free solution or the characteristic solution. I will call it the characteristic sum. Just mean the sum of the characteristic solutions, right? Be careful because you have a double zero. So we have somebody tell me, we'll call this Y free, whatever you want to call it. What was I calling it before? I was calling it double bar Y, wasn't it? Okay, double bar Y. What are you going to multiply times e to the 3t? C. 
say not plus what? Remember, it's the simplest possible adjustment. Hmm? C. C1C, the simplest possible adjustment. I don't know why students have such a hard time with the simplest possible adjustment. Multiplication. Okay. Uh-oh. So now we do the other thing. What was I calling the other thing? Y P, yeah. Um, you also had a curly Y. Curly Y, yeah. Okay, we'll call this. You both will call it Y C. Your characteristic sum, right? Okay. Okay, now Y. You both will call this Y P probably. Script Y, right? Equals, well, what do we have down here? Let's just make a note on the right side. S equals three again, right? On the left side. S equals three twice. Uh-oh. We'd like to say equals e to the three t, some constant, or uh, d t e to the three t. Right? That's what we'd like. But Not adding anything. C one T plus G T equals equals free choice. This compelled choice isn't compelled because this is free. You guys get the idea of degrees of freedom? That's a free choice, not a compelled choice because C1 is free. You can do anything you like with it. We'll have to compare this, make sure we, we have this because we're going to run out of, out of space on the board. d squared minus 2d minus 3. Okay. So we're saying d is our compelled choice? Hmm? So you're referring to d as like a compelled choice? But d is a compelled choice, but you're adding a free choice to it. Mm -hmm. That makes it free. That's right. We already have this. It won't do. That won't do. Right? So what is why? Uh, 
Now remember, what's the simplest possible adjustment? I'm going to say it again. And somebody's got to get the idea. You can't use G. You can't use GG. Same reason you can't use G over here, right? C not plus G is three T equals three. Same thing you can't use G, right? You add a compel to a free, you're still free. Okay, so what's the simplest possible adjustment? Now somebody tell me. Y P with Y. What's the simplest possible adjustment for multiplying by T? It's multiplying by Huh? Multiply by one won't work. Zero. Multiply by t won't work. Zero. <laughs> Multiply g by one won't work. Mm -hmm. Multiply g by t won't work. Come on, what am I getting at? What's the next simplest thing? Yeah. It was G T squared. I've been saying that every day. The next simplest adjustment for multiplied by T would be T squared. And if you had some occasion we had s equals three again and again like two of them you'd have multiplied by t cubed then again and again and again multiplied by t to the fourth etc um, is that a g yeah that's a g okay you just making sure use an a so okay use the first letter of the alphabet okay gotcha thank you Okay. Okay, well, what's y prime? We have to calculate this. Equals, let's see. Two G T. Uh-oh, what did I forget? Ha <laughs> ha, what a moron. I knew it wasn't that simple. <laughs> we have to have the e to the 3t. 2g, g, e to the 3t. Plus g, t squared, e to the 3t. So this y prime, let's write it out again. 2g t, let's add t, e to 3t, g, g t, e to 3t. And what's left? 2 plus t squared. Right? Oh, you know, no matter what you do, you've got to do some calculations. So let's not even bother um, trying to make it easier. Okay? 
Let's not even bother. Let's just do the calculation. That's why I keep these things second order. Can you just put another A C to the decimal? Excuse me? The chain rule on A to the JC. Like, do you need to do the derivatives of that? Or am I just well, because we've got to plug it into here. Oh, okay. That's why we're calculating it. Mm -hmm. So that we can plug it into here and make some sense out of it, right? I think you meant by it plus three g c squared. Oh, what's wrong with this? Should there be another derivative for the exponent? Don't forget. Okay, is that what you were thinking? Yeah. Plus three g. What rule did I send on vacation? The chain rule, brownie points. Okay. Equals 2g times 1 times e to the 3p plus uh, 6gt. Six GT E to three P plus what is this interesting? Six GT E to three T, right? Make sure I do it right. Plus uh 3gt, 9gt squared. 9gt squared. E to the 3t. Boy, that will probably equals 2g plus 6gt. Well, a g comes up. We don't need the, the t comes up. G times, but the T to the 3T comes out too. Two plus uh, six T plus six T. plus 9t squared. Is that why double prime done right? So now we go y double prime minus well let's let's write y double prime equal g e to the three t. This is fun. This isn't. This isn't miserable. This is the fun part. The miserable part was here. g e to three t times two plus twelve t plus nine t squared. What would happen? If we did it right. Minus six y prime. Watch what happens. Equals uh, g e to the 3t. Uh -oh. Let's see if I can. g e to the 3t. Well, I'm going to write minus 6 in. Well, no, it's not. You'll see why. G e to the 3t times minus 12t. You see the minus 12t? Right. Uh, right there. Minus
minus 12t. You guys see it? Minus 18t squared. that right minus the g is the t is going minus 18 t squared and what vanished what's going to vanish 12 t and guess what's going to vanish was it 9 y prime 9 y equals Nine times g t squared e to the three t nine g. Now what's going to vanish? Nine G T squared. Let's try it. Let's try it more obviously. We have e to the three T. Times G. Well, well, G is three T. I'm trying to make it nice. times 9g t squared, well, 9t squared. Now what's going to vanish? That's right. And the sum, right? The sum is supposed to equal what? 2e to 3t, because that's the sum. So the sum equals 2g e to the 3t. Everything else is gone. Isn't that gorgeous? And that's why I put this stuff in columns. It really is a linear algebra problem in disguise. We just don't have time to explain why. And the sum, oh no, this is too easy. Let's change this. Let's change this to make it a little more difficult. Can I just change this one? I don't know. Look where I have it. I have so many places. We don't want g to equal 1. It's going to be 2g equals 2. Right? We don't want that. Can I change it to 5? 5. Let's put it in red. It's an adjustment. Let's put it in red. Five. 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 You following that, Kelsey? Yes, thank I, you. I five because the very next step, you'll see why now. Let's write okay. the next step in red so that you'll see why. The sum is supposed to be five e to the three t, and that's two g e to the three t, and that's why I didn't want g to kind of turn out to be one after all that work. You cancel e to the 3t, whatever you want to do. You can just cancel it, right? And you get 5 equals 2g. 5 halves equals g. So y general. Y gen for general, gen for general, Y 
y tan of t equals c naught plus c1t e to 3t plus gt squared plus 5 half t squared e to the 3t. You see what happened to the compelled part? It got on the highest degree term. You see what I'm saying? Or if you like, y gen of t equals c naught. Do you see where plus 5 half t squared? Three. Three. Compel. Get the idea? Okay. Well, we may have to spend another day on 4-4 four, four to get these ideas across. Okay, I'm going to change my other example. I'm going to change it. Everybody got their notes? Left side, x equals 3 twice. Right side, s equals 3 again, right? Uh-oh. All right. 1, 2, 3. What do you need? <laughs> One, two, three. But since it's a second order differential equation, something's got to be compelled. Second order, right? See not? See one. Three. Right? The next choice can't be free, right? T equals five half compelled. Get the idea? That thing can't be free. Something's got to be compelled. Okay. It's a great lesson uh, to teach you something that's just fundamental to mathematics, is free choices, how to handle freedom. It's not necessarily the best lesson for differential equations. <laughs> it distracts. But uh, every, every book uh, is, is big on it. So we have to learn this lesson. And it is great, it is a great lesson for learning how to think about mathematics. Every mathematical question has a free part and a compelled part. Okay. Enough, uh, enough brilliance. Let's try another. Uh, let's try an easy one. Y double prime minus y prime minus 2y equals t e to 3t. And we'll leave this open. In case you want to change it to 5 or whatever, right? 
we'll leave this open. So we'll put the equal sign a little bit over, <laughs> over here. Now, d squared minus d minus 2y equals d. Right? So on the left side, left, left side, left, great. Are we agreed? On the right side. S equals three. We put twice in parentheses in, with a question mark. Twice? Once? Which is it? You don't have to know. It's going to be twice, but you don't have to know. All you have to know is the characteristic. I'm calling the characteristic sum today. And by that, I just mean double bar y, which your book will call yc equals c1. Tell me about it. C plus C two negative one C brownie points twice once we don't care Degree is one, right? So you have to know this, the degree of T is one. Are we agreed? The degree of T is one. So when we put our yt up, we have to go, uh-oh, we already got c0 and c1, or c1 and c2, whatever. So we'll have to call this And that means we're going to have to put up how many numbers for a degree one? Y equals, let's see, we're out of C. Let's do G. Let's do G naught plus degree one. One G. Your book will say A plus B T. Okay. 
Okay, your book will say A plus B T. Okay. Y prime equals G one. E to three T, right? Plus what? Let's see if I can do it right this time. G1, I'm using the product rule, right? Plus uh, G0 plus G1C times what? 3E to 3T. There you go. And there isn't that much sense. Uh, trying to simplify, we might just as well just calculate the second derivative, which is what do we got here? The easy one. Three G one. I'll make sure to correct me if I do something dumb. Plus three uh, yep, three G one. Isn't that right? Because I took the derivative of G naught plus G one T. I think I should go slower here. G1 times 3e e to the 3t plus g naught plus g1t times what? 9e e to the 3t. So there's the second derivative, 6g1 e to the 3t. Now we can write it out. 6g1, 3g1, 3g1. Plus 9 times g naught plus G one C times E to three T. So that's the key right here, degree one, right? That's the key. Let's put this in red key. Right there. Underline it. The red's a bit weak. It's more pink. That's the key. There's two degrees of freedom there, right? Because this is degree one. Okay. The degree of key is one. Okay. So let's go back and uh Figure it all out. Why double prime? I only have a, you know, I have a, I'm, I'm using nice examples where y double prime has leading coefficient one, right? Has coefficient one. Y double prime 6g1. Let's see, e to the 3t. Six G one plus nine G naught. Make sure it's getting done right. Plus nine G one T E to the T. Nine G one T E to the T. Okay. Let's see if I can do it right. 
equals minus 61, look what happened, minus 60 not, uh-oh, be careful, minus 61, are we agree? Minus 61. Why are we making it negative? Because it would multiply by minus, minus y prime. You see what I'm pointing to? Gotcha. Okay. Yep. Thanks. Okay. Why is it minus 60? Well, this was y prime is 2. Oh, there's no 6. <laughs> That's terrible. I was hoping. It was false hope, right? Okay, minus g1, minus 3g0, minus 3g1t. Minus 3g0, minus 3g1t. And minus two y equals minus two g naught minus two g one t. So in the first example, we had, don't tell on me. In the first example, we had three on both sides, S equals on both sides, and we had to raise the degree. In this case, we have three only on one side, right? But be careful because we had to include another degree of freedom. You get the idea? Because it's degree one. And it looks like there's only, you know, one degree of freedom, right? Well, one, we had to include another degree of compulsion, I should say. We had to include another degree of compulsion, right? We've never heard that word before, degree of compulsion, but I'm referring to inherit degree one. You've got to have two, right? You've got to have two things. Okay, so that's the subtlety in this one. And you add them up, and you're supposed to get 1t, e to 3t, unless we need to change that. The sum equals 6g1 minus g1, 5g1, right? 9 minus 3 minus 2. Oh, this is too easy. Minus 5g0 plus minus 5g1t is that the right sum? No. What was that? 6 g1 minus 1 g1 is 5 g1. Excuse me? That in this, this 9 minus 5 is 4. Uh, you, you have a good point, don't you? And they're both 4, aren't they? And this is t. 1t, e to 3t, right? Equals 5g1 minus 4g9 
teach you guys that this can be done by one person and now it's going to look to you guys like it takes six people to do it right <laughs> 5g1 plus 4g0 plus 4g1 4g1t e to 3t so this tells you one T cancel E to the three T, right? Let's leave this old boy general up. Just to compare what happened. I can't believe it. Cancel, right? I can't believe it, I'm out of time. 1t equals 5g1 plus 4g0 plus 4g1t. 0 plus 1t. 0 equals 5g1 plus 4g0. And one equals four. Isn't that nice? I'm just doing the simplest thing. Zero plus one T, right? One fourth equals G one. Five times one fourth plus four G naught. That's G one. Four G naught equals minus five fourths. G naught equals minus five over sixteen. Right? I hope. 4g0 equals minus 5 over 4. So g0 is minus 5 over 16. So do that, right? Okay. So y gen, well, script y equals. Minus 5, 16. Plus one fourth T all times e to the three T, am I right? And we could, the book calls this Y P equals uh C1, was it 2T? And YGN equals the sum equals Now you can compare the two y gens. Did I do the y gen right? Minus 5 sixteen. G naught plus G1 T times e to the 3t, right? G naught plus G1 T times e to the 3t, right?
you can compare the two y gems. And we have, I'm going to, I'm going to write underneath to remind us what happened. The left side. S equals two, S equals negative one, the right side. S equals three. And now you can see it's twice. Once, twice, we don't care, right? But you can write twice now comfortably because you need it minus 5 sixteenths and 1 fourth. But you don't have to write twice. All you have to know is that you need a degree 1 object. Right? So you got two compelled quantities instead of one. From the degree 1 object. You guys get the idea? Okay, now let's go over here. Can I erase the nice solution? On the left side, we have S equals three twice, right? On the right side, You had S equals three again, but just once. Right? So we have to have a C squared. Does that make sense? So those are our two examples of free choices. And unfortunately, well, we're late again. I'm going to have to talk about what to do with cosines and sines. It's very similar, but uh, on Monday, so we probably won't have much uh, chapter five on our test. Sorry. So I have to be more of a quest. Okay, and I'm supposed to go home and give this a shot. Yeah, it's really super simple. Send me your...